Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the Stargate Universe Sci-Fi Cult Classics uh, documentary. I'm delighted this evening to be joined by the one and only Dion Johnston, who played the role of Captain Warwick uh, Trevor uh, in Stargate SG-1 and also played the role of Captain Nelson. And in a few times it was also the arch emesis of uh, SG-1 playing Shaka and Neonk as well and appeared over nine episodes in a recurring role from 1999 to 2003. Uh, Dion, 2003, 17 years ago, does it almost feel that long? <laughs> it does, man. Like so much has happened since then. So it's, it's. Uh, I mean, so much of it I, I remember so clearly and, and so much of it seems like a lifetime uh, away, which is pretty wild. Uh, and uh, Dion, um, how did the opportunity uh, come about for you to get involved in uh, in Stargate SG-1? I know you play multiple uh, characters, but how did the first door open, say? Yeah, you know, it, it happened in in stages for me. I mean, Stargate at the time in, you know, which is was shot in Vancouver, was uh, was the show that... Um, you know, every actor in, you know, who was a local needed to make their rounds. At some point you were going to, to end up in an episode of it because it was such a long running show. And uh, I'd been doing theater at the time and uh, Michael Shanks, who, who was Daniel Jackson, uh, did um, a, a production of Hamlet in which I played Horatio in. So a lot of the producers came to, to, to check him out in the show. And, and that was the first time that they saw my work. So then I started getting auditions for, for Stargate. And then uh, my very first episode was Rules of Engagement, where I played, it was a, on a, a sort of an offshoot planet where they had these, these young kids who were training. Um, uh, they were training, eventually become warriors of the Jaffa, but they were playing war okay. games, pretending that they were Stargate uh, um, uh, team members and battling against each other and then uh and then one day when first blood was actually drawn then the battle would be for real and they would fight to the death and whoever lived would would become the the new uh jaffa warriors and that was my first episode and uh dion uh you said coming from a theater sort of stage coming on to the stepping on the set of a big massive production like Stargate for the first time was it intimidating was it daunting obviously I, you, I, I your character was the, the first or second season I, I knew Stargate SG1 took off globally uh, come season two but um, it was, oh, yeah. a, was it a daunting experience for you it, it, it was um, it was mind-blowing and and one of the things I remember very clearly uh, was the producers uh, telling us, myself and an, another guy who came on and we were both theater actors doing this for the first time, was uh, come and watch the, the episode that we're shooting right now, which is just before your guys' episode. And you can walk the set and uh, uh, make it your own world, talk to whoever you want. The only thing that we ask is if we're shooting a scene, don't cross the eye line of the actors who, who are, are, are in play. Don't walk in front of them. And you know, other than that, do whatever you want. And that gave us a chance to, and this was a, a scene that was set in a medieval world. So they'd actually built like a full on village with chickens running around, a forest clearing that, that led into the village. And this was all on a massive soundstage with mist kind of blowing through the trees and everything like that. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It was, it was phenomenal. But everyone there was so welcoming and so, so warm and so, you know, uh, generally worked to, to make this feel like your home. So I felt very welcome by the time we came to shoot our episode. Yeah, and I suppose uh, one thing uh, sp to speak into Cliff uh, Simon, who played a recurring role as uh, the Gaul Ball in um, Stargate SG One. He told me mm. that. When he was on a start of uh, an episode, he didn't know whether he'd be coming back or not. There was no agreement, no long-term contract, no nothing that you'd be appearing in multiple episodes. So he just said he worked his ass off in terms of that episode and trying to leave a good impression in the hope that he'd be brought back for more episodes. Was that sort of the mm -hmm. same in terms of yours? Did you have any sort of agreement or notice as well there'd be future characters in mind or when you appeared for one episode, was it like, I'm here from one episode, please God, I do really well and they might see potential in my character or, or me for other episodes? 
Yeah, um, it, it was it was one episode. And I do remember the, the, the producers that we would get word from the actors saying they're loving what you guys are doing. And the very end of the episode, they actually shifted the, the dialogue to focus it on myself and, and the other actor who became a very good friend of mine, Aaron Craven is his name. And they, they were just like, just focus on those guys, let them let them wrap up this this episode. And so, you know, there are hopes that, that, that you could end up coming back as our characters didn't didn't die. But um, but that all sort of depended on how they navigated and wrote the series. But my, my next invite came in a different form. Uh, Peter DeLuise, who uh, was directing on, on the show at, at the time, um, got to write his first episode. And he wanted to take the, the um, um, they were called the Unas, and they were the, the, the original aliens who the Goa'uld bonded with. And they'd had various Unas throughout the, the, the seasons. And, um, and they felt that they were very stiff in these rubber alien suits that didn't really move or breathe. And they wanted to create a dynamic story. So we wrote the story of, of a young Unas coming of age and, and wanted me to play that role. So that was my second uh, big opportunity on, on the show. And that really opened doors because it, it, it showed production um, kind of the, the range of what I, could, what I could do. And I could really use my, my theatrical background uh, in creating this character. So, uh, so that was very cool and unexpected, very unexpected. And uh, Dion, I suppose the first time you got to work with uh, Richard Dean Anderson, uh, meeting him mm. for the first time, uh, sitting on the stage for him, I suppose he was the sort of the big name of the show, the, the big blockbuster oh, yeah. name yeah. from his time in MacGyver. What was your first, yeah. can you remember your first conversation or your first experience meeting him or what was that like? I, I, you know, it, it, it took a, a little bit because a lot of my scenes uh, initially weren't weren't with them. My, my entire first episode was uh, with as, as the UNAS um, was with uh, Michael Shanks, Daniel Jackson, okay. and I already knew him from on stage. But when we we eventually had an episode where predominantly my episode was was with him and it was one on one. And that was a fantastic experience because I really got to see behind the scenes of of what it was like to because he was, you know, both, a, a, you know, the lead of, of the show, but yeah. also an executive producer on the show. And he had a family in, in, in L.A. that, you know, his, his biggest thing was like, I, you know, I just want to get through the, the week and make sure that everything works and nothing falls apart so I can fly home and, and, and be with my daughter, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just neat to, to see the, you know, just how human, how, how just like yeah. anybody else he, he is, even though he was carrying the weight of, of, of all of that, you know. You know, in between takes, he would be looking at future scripts and, and you know, going, no, this isn't going to work. We're going to have to look at this. We're going to have to send this back. And, you know, and then boom, action. And then we're rolling. And then he's right there with me in the in the scene. So he was very cool and very level and, and uh, you know, uh, a good person to to learn from. Yeah, and I suppose that uh, Dion, uh, you mentioned that you played some good characters uh, in the series, but you also played as uh, some uh, lesser evil sort of characters as well. And uh, what was that sort of like, uh, mixing the, the good and the bad uh, all all within the the one sort of person? Oh my God, it was it was fun, and it was torturous because because quite often they were aliens in in full on latex suits. And, and right with scleral lenses, so, so you couldn't see clearly. You'd be up at like three o'clock in the morning. You'd be in the makeup chair for three hours. I'd usually fall asleep in the chair. You, you couldn't move anywhere without assistance of, of people taking you back to your icebox trailer to, to cool off. Um, it was, uh, it was a, a, an arduous process playing these, these, these kind of aliens, but it was so much fun at the same time. Because for me, it was like a lot of mask work, like finding, you know, what can I do? What, what can I do with the, the, the form that I've been given, you know, to, to create more dynamism, to create uh, more of a sense of, of character. And, uh, and so, I, you know, and it was more screen time. Like I was, I was very new at being on, on, on TV. So one of the things they said is, is we can't necessarily bring your character back that you played as, as you, but because you're such a good actor, we can bring you back as all of these different aliens. And, and, and if you can hack the, the process of being under all that latex and, and everything, um, it'll give you screen time and you can just keep learning the, the, the craft and everything. So, uh, so, uh, so that was a great experience for me. I felt very much under, under their wing. And I suppose uh, Dion, in terms of Stargate, we know it's a massive cult following all over the world from Brazil to Argentina to Australia, New Zealand, yeah. South Africa, wow. mainland Europe, 
uh, it's, it's a, a global sort of show. And one thing, speaking to some of the actors and actresses that have appeared on the show, they speak about the the fan base and the comic conventions and appearing mm. in these all over and being invited to all these conventions, even when the show is finished two or three years on. I suppose you've played a character in Stargate, so you multiple characters, so you're always sort of facilitated facilitated to that sort of background as well did any opportunities like that come about for you you know i, I remember going to a, a convention in in london um that was just phenomenal because one of the things they had was a, a costume parade and okay. and which uh, the cast who who was there got to uh, to judge and, and and meet the the folks and announce the winners and everything and uh and there was a young woman who had created a, a shaka costume that like looked almost exactly like what i wore on on screen right down to the to the the bone necklace and the leather and the the fur and everything and and, uh, and I was just blown away at at the detail, the passion, the energy behind it. And and uh, I had people who uh, had drawn characters, you know, had drawn uh, versions of, of of my character in in um, uh, Rules of Engagement and a few of the other episodes that I'd done. So it was it was very awesome to 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 experience. It's it's such an amazing fan base, um, and it was really cool to see. And I suppose, uh, Dion, we're now roughly, as you said, uh, 10 more, 10 more than 10 of the years, I suppose, going on 15 years uh, since uh, Stargate uh, SG-1. Do you think there's a sort of a longing there for another sort of movie? I know the original movie was back in the early sort of uh, 90s, but do you think with because of the current sort of... Um, move towards uh, more darker team movies like uh, The Dark Knight, The Joker, more adult team, that a Stargate movie uh, would be something that could be looked at in 2021, given that it's nearly 20 years since the last movie. I could absolutely see that happening. I mean, the, the premise of it, the idea that there are portholes in the galaxy that can take you anywhere in a matter of seconds, and they've been left by alien races, you know, since like beginning of time is, is, is something that, that we still think about and to, to re-examine it in, in a different fashion. I know there was a, a later Stargate season that, that took a little bit of a darker edge, you know, and, and I could, I could see another film or, or a reboot of the series. Uh, uh, there's so much more that could be explored and, and so much more that could continue to speak to, to today, you know, so I wouldn't be surprised I if there's a reboot. And I suppose, uh, Dion, lastly, before I let you go, uh, in terms of your time in Stargate uh, SG-1, and you, I know you played multiple characters, but if you had to sum it up in, say, two sentences, all your experience, and what would those emotions be, and how would you describe it for your time in uh, SG-1? Wow. I would say it, it, was, uh, it was groundbreaking for me. Um, it, it was a place where I got to cut my teeth and feel that I was really under the wing of a, a family that um, uh, believed in my abilities and, and, and believed what uh, I would eventually come to do and, and gave me my start. So I'm very grateful to, to Stargate for, for that opportunity and for those memories. Uh, Dion Johnson, Johnstone, uh, a pleasure talking to you uh, this evening to relive your memories and your time in uh, Stargate uh, SG-1 from 1999 to 2003, a total of nine episodes, multiple characters, and obviously uh, some good, uh, some bad, uh, but all throughout uh, some great acting from you. And uh, Dion, pleasure talking to you this evening, and we wish you the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Pleasure talking with you too. Thank you.